Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is David from DevDen Web Dev, and in today's video, we'll be looking at one key accessibility feature which is called the skip links. We'll look at why is it important, then we'll look at it in Elementor, and I'll show you a couple of problems that you will see when using it in Elementor and how to fix those problems. So if that's something that interests you, then let's jump right in. So, what exactly are skip links? According to Amber Hines, skip to content links are a hyperlink that allows users to quickly navigate to the main content of the page, bypassing navigation menus and other elements in the header. So now let's go ahead and see it in action. We'll see why it's important. So let me head over to the MDN docs website. As you notice from this MDN docs, let's say we want to get to this link within the main content area. So that's basically the CSS property. You see that there are a lot of links that happen before that, which are repetitive and we don't really care about those links because they happen on all pages. What we're caring about is the main content area. We want to get quickly to that main content area. So now I will quickly use the keyboard. So go to the search bar and start pressing the tab key. So now it has a skip to main content link. So let's say you want to get to that CSS property. All I just do is click on that skip to content link, then press the tab key. And immediately I get there to the CSS property and I can open the link if I want. So for a keyboard only user, this is important to me because I want to be able to get to where I want to go to quickly and as efficiently as possible. If you're using a mouse, then you wouldn't be bothered with this because you can easily quickly scan to the link. But now watch what happens if there were no skip links. So let me go back again to the search bar, press the tab key. So now imagine there were no skip links. Watch what happens if I want to get to that CSS. I start pressing the tab key. I will have to go through the header link, go through the navigation links. Then I will have to go through the sidebar as well. And just, you can see that scroll bar, there's a lot of links within the sidebar. So it will take me probably like even like a minute just for me to be able to get finally to the CSS. So that takes me up like maybe two or three minutes. And now imagine somebody who has problem with motor skills who cannot quickly tab through. So we'll have taken him probably like 30 minutes just to be able to get to this CSS property link because he doesn't have a mouse. So you might say, oh, why doesn't he have a mouse? He might be a screen reader user who needs to navigate your page. So all he has access to is a keyboard because a screen reader user is someone who has difficulty seeing the screen. So it might be someone who is partially blind, totally blind, or just has some kind of eye defects. So he cannot easily see the screen properly. That's why he's relying on a keyboard and the screen reader to read what's on the screen. So it will take him over maybe 20 minutes just trying to get to the main content of your page. But when there is a skip link, which I'll show you again, I can just quickly click on that skip link and I'm in the main content area and that's how fast it is. So now let's head over to an Elementor site and see how it works in an Elementor site. So here's the first site, which was created as a page in, using Elementor. I did this in a previous tutorial. So let's go with the tab key again. So I'll go to address bar, now tab. You see there's a skip link. And this page is not that bad because there's only just a couple of links. So when I press the skip link, see, it skips to the main content just fine. If I press tab again, I go straight to the link. So I've basically avoided the top links, all these unnecessary links, and I've gone straight to the main content area. This is when it's on a page, it works perfectly. But watch what happens when it is on a post that's using the single post template. So the same thing. Press the tab key. There is a skip to content link there. Let me try to skip. Ordinarily, I would assume that it would now move over to the London Architectural Transformation. So when I press the tab key, it should move from there. But watch what happens if I press, nothing happens. 
you can see from the address bar that something changes, but nothing happens on the page. That's simply because there is a problem with the skip links whenever you are using a single post template. It was already documented in a GitHub request by Anne. So you can see it from here. It says, the main ID equals to content tag disappears upon setting page layout to full width, as well as when you use a single page template or a single post template. So that's why you can see when you go back to the page, it has the ID there, which is content, but the main content area is missing that ID because when, let me show you the difference. So let's go to this page or right click inspect. From the bottom, you can see there is a main ID equals to content for the main content area. So that's why the skip links works. Now, if you go over to this other page, now let's right click inspect. You see there is the header, then following after the header, rather than a main ID equals to content, it's just a div. And that's where the problem is because there's a div, so it doesn't work. Same thing when you see this other page, the same thing I did, this is on my own page as well. So if I go to the skip to content, if I press enter, nothing happens because there is no main ID equals to content. So to fix the first problem, all we have to do is just make sure that there is a main ID equals to content on the page. So how do we do that? If you see from this page, if we inspect, you see that there is a couple of problems. First, you see the header, it is a div instead of a header because a page should contain what we call the header, the main content area, the navigation bar. You should have a, if there's a sidebar, then that should be called an aside. And then there is a footer. Let me show you an example with the MDN docs. See this header area is called the header. So if you inspect and go up, you see this is the header. So that's for the header area. It can be within a div, but as long as it's not within any other kind of like section or other thing, then this is the page header. Then if you right click to this side, let's go up. You see when we go straight to the top, you see this, this is an aside. Although it is wrapped by some divs, but if you go all the way up, you see there's nothing else other than divs. They're just divs wrapping them. So those divs can be ignored. They have a generic role, so those are ignored. But it has a tag of a side. If you come to this main area, inspect, you see it has a tag of main ID equals to content. So that's where whenever you use that skip to content link, it switches directly to this portion of the page. So that's what your page is supposed to have. Because a page ideally is broken into two broad sections. One is called the repeating content area. Then the other one is the area that changes per page. So you see the header. If you go to any page, this header probably remains the same. This sidebar also remains the same. So that's why it's called an aside, not the main content area. But within the main content area, if you try to change, let's go to something like maybe this one visibility, you see, this remains the same because it's also a navigation, but what is in the center changes, this also changes. So basically this is the main content area. That is the focal point of each page. The other things are just added information on the page. So same with the footer, the footer, let me go to the end. The footer also doesn't change per page. So those ones are kind of like static for each page, but the only place that has dynamic content just in quotes, is the main content area. So that's where we are focused on. That's why we need a skip link to switch quickly to that main content area for a screen reader user or a keyboard user or just a random normal user. They need to be able to quickly get to the main content of your page. So now let's go ahead and see how we can solve all of our problems. So I'll switch directly to the Elementor edit page now. So here I am on the Elementor edit page, you see, the page is divided into three portions. We have the header, we have the single post template, and then we have the footer. Because typically with your blog posts, you would normally have the header, then the single post template where you can now write all your blog posts using Gutenberg or however you feel like using it because those parts don't really change per page. So now let's solve all of the problems. First, let's go to the header and make sure the header has the proper tag, which is header. So to do that, 
just go to the settings on the page settings. So this is the header settings. If you're using the top bar experiment, it'll be at the top. If you're using the old layout, it will be at the bottom left of your page. So click on that. Then you see the HTML tag there. Change it from a div to a header. Then publish it. That's it for the first portion. Then the next one we need to go, let me press Ctrl E and then say the single post now. Or let me sort out the footer first. So footer. So that's the name of the footer. The same thing, go to the settings, change the HTML tag from div to footer, enter, then publish it. So we've sorted out two problems. Now control E again, or command E if you're on the Mac. Then this time, let me go to the single post template. That's the single post template. So we'll also do the same thing. So go to the cog icon, change the HTML tag to main, and then publish it. Now let's test it out and see if it works. So let's go back. So here's the page. So go to the address bar, try to locate. This is the skip content. If I press it, it still doesn't work. And why is that? Because we are looking for this ID, which basically says hashtag content. Now let's go through the page, inspect it. Let me bring it up a bit. So you see the page has a header, a main and a footer. But unfortunately, Elementor strips out that ID equals to content from the main content area whenever you use a single post template. That has been there for about two years. We've been asking for them to finally give us the opportunity to put in the ID. They haven't solved the problem, but they did offer a solution, which I will now show you how to do it here. So let's go back. So all of this page, rather than using the ID on the main template, like I showed you from the MDN docs, the main does not have to be the first thing. It can have a div wrapping the main. So you can go to the HTML tag and set it back to a div. But then you now, this is best when you're using container experiments. So just simply click on the plus icon and create a new container. Let's, let's set some settings on the main container. So this main container, make sure it is full width. Then the direction is set to the downward as column. And make sure everything is set to zero. We don't need any setting on this. So zero for gap, zero for padding. So that everything is completely flushed out. Then go use your navigator. You can open it up by pressing Control I or Command I if you're on the Mac. Then simply right click, copy, go to the container that you have. Let me just rename it to be main. So this is going to be our main container. Then just paste it in there. So paste. Our first container is there. Go to the second one. Do a copy. Go to the main container and press paste. So we have our two containers now. So now we can delete the other container. So delete the first one and delete the second one. So now we have this container which now act as our main content area. So press that one. Final thing we need to do is go over to your layout under the advanced options, change the HTML tag of that one to main. Then under the advanced tab, give it an ID of content. So content, then let's publish it. And then view it on the front end. You can see now that for this is the body. We have our skip link. We have the header. We have a div, but within the div, we have the main, which has an ID of content. Then we have our footer. So now everything is there. So it should work out properly. So let's close this and see if it works. So let me press the tab key. This is one thing that's annoying with the admin bar. It should ideally be after the skip link. But well, 
one thing for them to fix. So now here's the skip to content. So now let me click on it. See, now it works. But there is a problem. This leads me to the second problem on the page. Now watch what happens when I press the tab key. It still goes back to the top. Although we have an ID equal to content, it doesn't respect that ID. It goes back to the top. And that's where the second problem is. Let me switch back to the GitHub request so that you can see the problem for yourself. I'll leave a link to everything in the description below. So here is the second problem. Also posted by Anne she said, the skip link added in the hello theme is dysfunctional. It doesn't work well. Unfortunately, Maxim from element.how was able to solve the problem, which was written in this blog post. So this is the problem and this is the fix. All you have to do is use your Elementor custom code or wherever you like to put your scripts in. Just copy this entire script and then paste it in any HTML snippet. I'll go back to the page. For this example, I'll be using directly in the single post template, but generally you should add it to a general area of your page. So let me show you. I'll go back to the single post template at the very bottom. Let me add an HTML widget. Then within this HTML widget, I'll just paste that code and then publish it. Basically, the problem is relating to the anchor links because it uses JavaScript to do the smooth scrolling and that breaks accessibility. But now that I've added this code, watch what happens. We go back to the page and then let me just refresh it. And now when I press, I get to the skip links, I press enter. Now when we tab, see, it skips all of these top icons and then it goes directly to the main content area, which is starting from this heading area. And then it works out just fine. And that is the way to solve the problem completely on your page. One thing I hope is that Elementor looks into this and sorts it out natively. But in the meantime, those are the things you need to do. First, make sure you have your header, your main and your footer tags set up properly. Then make sure you have added the ID equals to content. And finally, you have to disable the JavaScript that Elementor is using for their smooth scrolling anchor tag. And yeah, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. But before we go, here's a challenge for you. So here we have a section. When we hover over the image, you see, it opens up and it leads to two other images. They have hover effects. And when you use the keyboard as well, so let's see, it also works. We can access the links. Not only that, it also respects reduced motion for people who don't like to see moving things on their page. So let me go over to settings and then disable animations. If you go back to the page, you see it no longer has those animations. All it has is just the changing of colors, but those moving animations are no longer there. So that's the challenge for you. Let's see if you can do it. You can email me your results and I would love to see them. The link to my email will be in the description. So that's it. And I don't know if you noticed when I was doing the testing, if you go to my blog, this is just a demo page, but see, it also has this switch to dark mode. So you see, you can easily quickly switch to dark mode, even in Elementor. And that's a cool feature you can add to your pages. So you, just so you can cover up all accessibility areas. And as usual, it is keyboard accessible. So let's with the tab key. You can access it and it works just fine. So the goal of accessibility is to try to reach as many people as possible. We want them to have choice. So if they don't want to see a light screen, you can add the dark mode to your page. Make sure you add reduced motion for people who have vestibular disorders. Make sure you add skip links as well so that keyboard only users or screen reader users or people who use assistive technology can quickly skip to the main part of your content without having to go for like thousand marathon just to get to one simple section on your page. And there are so many other things which I will try to look into in a future video. 
So look around for that video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.